Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. Among the descendants of Noah's grandchildren and great-grandchildren, we encounter the lineage of Cush. Who was this character mentioned in the sacred scriptures? In this video, I will delve into the figure of Cush and explore three of the main kingdoms that emerged from his descendants. On the banks of the Nile River, in the heart of Africa, flourished a civilization shrouded in mysteries and remarkable achievements. Recognized as the Kingdom of Kush, this legendary empire left a lasting legacy that resonates through the ages. Get ready to embark on a journey of discovery and understanding as we witness the impressive dawn of African history through the eyes of the Three Kingdoms of Kush. The Three Kingdoms of Kush and the Kushites in the East the name Kush holds multiple meanings, referring both to skin tone and to a geographical region associated with the descendants of the biblical character Kush. Kush is a term that likely refers to black, dark skinned, or simply dark, connecting to the descendants of the African continent, particularly from the regions of Sudan and Ethiopia. Kush played a fundamental role in repopulating the world after the flood. He was the eldest son of Ham and one of Noah's first grandchildren, entrusted with giving rise to diverse peoples and colonizing the New World after the destruction of the pre-flood ancient world. From the lineage of Cush arose various nations, peoples, and numerous tribes. Among these peoples, one of the most prominent is the historical Kingdom of Sudan, which in antiquity was known as the Kingdom of Cush, directly referencing the lineage of Cush, the son of Ham. This kingdom stands as tangible evidence of the link between biblical history and geographic history. The kingdom of Cush had two main urban centers, Napeta and Meru. Napeta was the initial capital, and the kings of Cush were often buried in pyramids in Napeta. Later, the capital was moved to Meru, a city further south. Similar to the ancient Egyptians, the Kushites built pyramids to honor their rulers and notable figures. The Kushite pyramids have their own distinct characteristics, differing from the Egyptian pyramids with steeper angles. The geographical location of Kush granted it an important role in trade between the Mediterranean, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the Middle East. They controlled crucial trade routes crossing the desert, which brought them considerable wealth. This relationship between the land of Cush and its descendants is also mentioned outside of the Bible, where the people of the region themselves referred to their land as the land of Cush, thus honoring their biblical ancestor. The book of Genesis confirms that Cush was the son of Ham who became the father of African peoples, solidifying his importance in genealogies and the dispersal of peoples after the flood. Within ancient Jewish traditions, the term Kush is consistently associated with African peoples and is related to nations in Africa, such as Ethiopia and the region that was known as Nubia in antiquity. In the Bible, there are various references to the descendants of Kush, as well as to the descendants of all of Ham's sons. This includes frequent mentions of the name Canaan. The Canaanites, for example, were rivals and enemies of the Israelites. An intriguing curiosity about the Nubian people, who are descendants of Kush, is that they often served as rivals to the ancient Egyptians while also maintaining a friendly relationship with them. Remarkably, they even established a dynasty of pharaohs of Kushite origin, meaning Nubian origin. These pharaohs are known as the Black Pharaohs, not only because the ancient Egyptians themselves were of African origin, but due to the notable differences in skin tone and features between the Egyptians and the Nubians. In ancient Egyptian sculptures, Egyptians are often depicted with a tan skin tone, while Nubians and Kushites are represented with a darker skin tone. This artistic distinction highlights the differences in physical features between these groups. Another ancient kingdom with roots in the lineage of Kush, the son of Ham, and also located on the African continent, is the country of Ethiopia. The ancient Ethiopians are among the world's oldest peoples, a fact supported not only by science but also by experts. It's important to note that the antiquity of peoples is relative and that all cultures have their own histories with different timelines, but Ethiopians in Ethiopia stand out for their long history. 
One of the most notable periods in the ancient history of Ethiopia is the Kingdom of Aksum, which flourished roughly between the 1st and 7th centuries AD. The Kingdom of Aksum was a powerful state that controlled important trade routes connecting the Red Sea to the interior of Africa. The city of Aksum served as the capital of the kingdom and was known for its impressive obelisks and palace complexes. Ethiopia is one of the world's oldest nations to adopt Christianity as its official religion. In the early 4th century, the Kingdom of Aksum converted to Christianity and developed a unique form of Christianity known as the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church. The church played a central role in Ethiopian culture and society over the centuries. Ethiopians are also direct descendants of Kush, much like the Nubians. There are numerous references to individuals with origins in Ethiopia and Nubia in the original Hebrew and Aramaic biblical texts. Determining precisely from which of these two regions an individual hails can be complicated, as the term Kush encompasses both Nubia and Ethiopia. This connection between the peoples of Ethiopia and Nubia as descendants of Kush is a significant part of the genealogies and historical traditions of the region. It highlights the importance of these ancient civilizations and their role in the history of Africa and humanity as a whole. Another historically significant people directly linked to the lineage of Kush are the Sumerians. The Sumerians were an ancient people who inhabited the region of Mesopotamia, situated between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in what is now modern-day Iraq. They are considered one of the earliest complex civilizations in history, emerging around the 4th millennium BCE and playing a crucial role in the development of society, culture, and writing. The Sumerians organized themselves into independent city-states, such as Ur, Uruk, Lagash, and Nippur. Each city had its own government, legal system, and religious center. While they shared a common language and culture, these cities often came into conflict. The Sumerians are famous for developing cuneiform writing, one of the earliest known forms of writing in history. They used clay tablets to record information, from administrative records and contracts to literary and mythological works. The Sumerians indeed have their origins associated with Kush and should not be confused with the Akkadians, who are descendants of Shem, one of Noah's sons. The Sumerians, descendants of Kush, played a crucial role in human history. They even had a king who was a son of Kush. It's worth noting that the term Sumerian was not used by themselves to self-identify as a people. In their own language, they referred to themselves as Sagjiga, which can be translated as black heads or black faces. This description referred to their Cushitic descent and highlighted the distinction of darker hair and skin compared to neighboring peoples with lighter shades. Some scholars of biblical studies suggest that Nimrod, a son of Cush, possibly was one of the early Sumerians in ancient Sumer. We have a video about this son of Cux who rebelled against God and was responsible for creating the Tower of Babel, the link to this video will be here in the description. The descendants of Cush, including the Sumerians, were not limited to Africa, they also inhabited regions of the East. While they may not have constituted the majority of the population, their presence and influence in these territories persisted over time, even up to the present day. A clear example of this is the Sudanese Arabs or Cushitic Arabs, who have a presence in the Middle East but trace their ancestry back to Nubia, located in Sudan and Ethiopia. Unlike the Semitic Arab groups, these Sudanese are not originally Arabs but rather Cushitic peoples who migrated and settled in the region and embraced Islam over time. Throughout history, we can identify several Cushitic peoples inhabiting the Middle East. From ancient times, the Kingdom of Sheba, whose people were originally Semitic, mixed with Cushitic peoples, resulting in a culture that is a blend of these influences. The Kingdom of Sheba, also known as Saba, was an ancient civilization that existed in the Arabian Peninsula, in the area that now includes parts of Yemen and Ethiopia. The Kingdom of Sheba was located in a strategic region along trade routes that connected the Mediterranean Sea and the Middle East with South Asia and East Africa. 
As a result, the kingdom thrived by controlling and taxing the trade that passed through its lands. One of the most famous stories associated with the kingdom of Sheba is that of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon of Israel. According to both biblical and Islamic traditions, the Queen of Sheba visited King Solomon in Jerusalem to test his wisdom and knowledge. There are discussions about the origin of the Queen of Sheba, who visited King Solomon in the biblical narrative. Her appearance and origin are debated, considering whether she was Semitic or Cushitic. These cultural and ethnic mixtures often result from geographical proximity and factors like alliances between different groups. The history of the ancient kingdom of Sheba is a notable example of how the interaction between Cushitic and Semitic peoples resulted in a unique and complex culture. If you are familiar with the history of these three kingdoms from the lineage of Cush, the character Cush, and the meaning of his name, and if you have knowledge about which nations this lineage refers to, please share in the comments. Also, feel free to suggest other characters and kingdoms from the scriptures that you would like to learn more about in future videos. See you soon.